Hello everyone. Well, here we are again with another OPC art kit to go. Before we get started, I would like to say a big shout out and thank you to our art patron, Anthology Senior Living of Troy. We are so grateful that they are helping us out and um, supporting us so that we can bring some of these special things to you. On the front of your bag, you will find a little brochure about all their amenities and um, you'll find a card for Caitlin who can answer any of your questions that you might have. So please keep them in mind. And Anthology, we're gr very grateful for your support in our creative endeavors here at OPC. So today we are going to be making a birdhouse plaque. And it's really a fun, easy project that you can do and it offers a lot of different possibilities. I have one here that I did and um, it, it's just kind of a, my design, but I'll give you some different tips and things like that and you can come up with whatever you want to do. The sky's kind of the limit. We did choose a color palette of either the ocean breeze color or and white. And then the roofs on the birdhouses are actually natural wood. So that could add in a third color if you prefer not to paint it and to just leave it the natural wood tone. So since on my sample, I did the ocean breeze, I think when we do this one here today together, I'm going to paint my birdhouse white and use the ocean breeze as the trim. But you can do it however you want. If you have other acrylic paints at home, just the simple little craft paints um, of any type and you would rather add in some other colors or do a different color, you can do that as well. But we just thought these were nice summery colors, so that's what we're offering you. Okay, so in your kit, you're going to find just this big piece of wood plaque and you're going to find a couple of little frame pieces attached. And actually that's what these are from, our, our frames. We kind of broke them apart and thanks to our wonderful wood shop, they cut them all so that um, they match your piece of wood. And the very first thing you're going to have to do, and I'm using a little different piece of wood than what you are in your kit, so I think yours are gonna match up just fine. But the very first thing that I would do so that you can get your wood gluing and setting up, because it does take a little bit of time to dry, you'll have a little container of wood glue in your kit. And all you're gonna do is take your popsicle stick and just put a little wood glue on each end. It probably takes 10, 15 minutes at least for it to set up, but it's a pretty strong glue. So um, I would do that before I start anything else. That way you can get that part kind of going. And um, honestly, yours will fit better than what I started out doing. Um, I'm using a different one just because we ran out of the strips. But basically you're gonna do this and probably hold it for maybe two or three minutes. And um, once it's kind of starting to set, you can just set it aside and it will dry. I would take one of your paper towels and just slightly dampen it so that you can just wipe it off. It does dry clear, so even though you're seeing some white now, you won't see that later. So I'm gonna put my wood glue aside and kind of set that up here. And if they come apart, just put them back together and they will stay. Okay, so we're gonna let that kind of dry up. Every once in a while, you might wanna give it just a little push just so that it's, it's staying together. Now, your piece of wood, your plaque, has been actually put through the planer in the wood shop. So everything should be pretty smooth except where the hole was cut. So there is some medium grit sandpaper in your kit and I would just, do a little bit of sanding around the hole. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because actually things like this on the wood are really kind of fun if they look kind of rustic anyway. So, but you know, at least take up any of the splinters so if someone doesn't get a sliver, that kind of thing. Just kind of sand. Maybe go along the inside edges just a tiny bit. 
when it feels pretty smooth to the touch. It's not going to be ex absolutely perfectly smooth across um, because when they drill the hole, you know, you get a few little divots, but at least you'll have that smooth to the touch feel and you won't be, like I said, getting any of the little splinters in your fingers. So just do that on both sides. If you feel that anything is rough around your edges, you can touch that up too, but I think it should be fine. Then you will take your dampened piece of paper toweling and just kind of wipe off all the excess sandpaper or sand from the sandpaper. I have a little piece of tape left here that I'm gonna take off. And then just kind of work, wipe your work surface. I did include a piece of um, butcher paper as we normally do so that you can um, work on that and not you know, have problems with the surface of your table or anything like that. So at this point, I would pick the side that you think looks the best. The back side seems to have a few little more divots. So I'm gonna use this as my front, but when you're starting to paint, um, that part doesn't make too much difference until you start to embellish. You know, I might wanna check my roof here and just give it another little push so that it's drying. And then you're going to decide what color you want to paint your birdhouse. Now you do also have a little embellishment piece of wood, which really could be put anywhere. I put mine on the bottom of this blue one, but if you'd prefer to do something part way up, you could do that too. And I would paint that in the contrasting color. So I'm gonna be doing white, and then I think I'll paint my little piece here blue, okay? And we'll do the opposite of what I did in the sample. So, Gonna take you have a smaller version of the craft paint, but I have a bigger thing of white, so I'm gonna pour some out onto my styrofoam plate that is also in your kit. Now I may just do one coat right now for timing. Let's kind of put that out and then you can start to paint the color that you're choosing. If it was the blue, you could do the blue. I found really one coat, if you kind of really, you know, brush and smooth and go over it as it's wet was enough because I like seeing a little bit of that wood tone coming through um, just because I kind of like things a little bit more rustic. But if you want it to look, you know, just more of a, you know, solid white, you can wait till it dries and then apply a second coat. So at this point, you're going to be painting all over the surface. Be interesting to see how the second one looks in the opposite color. <laughs> now again, if you have something different you want to use at home, obviously it's hard for us with a kit to supply every color and know what everyone's decor is or what they might like, but we just thought these were good summery colors. And you can dab a little, but then just kind of dab and smooth. Um, there could be some little parts that are a tiny bit rough. Um, some have knots in the wood and actually I kind of like seeing some of the knots showing through a little bit and later we might distress this anyway. So now I would also tip and kind of do with the, the foam brush is nice because it kind of just move it all about and it gets in all the little spaces by dabbing and do the inside. Now, I mean, if you really want it, I guess you could do the inside of your circle another color. The only problem you're gonna have is, you know, making sure you don't get some of it on the edges. So I chose to do it all the same color. And get it up in there. And when you have all the pieces, now see it's still wet, so I got a little fingerprint there. I think I'll do my edges now. And then um, you want, before you turn it over to do the other side. Um, no. So I'm continuing here, painting the edges. Now I'm not being overly fussy right now. You, when you're doing this at home, you're gonna have a little more time. I'm just wanna get all the steps in so you can see what the process is here. So, you know, I'm probably not being as picky as you will be when you're doing your piece.
And again, if you really like that rustic look, you could even just leave some of the roughness a little bit showing through. Maybe you'll choose to have your sides be natural. I mean, you could do that too. Um, everyone might have a little different take on how they do this. Okay, so I've got everything but the back done. So, I'm gonna just smooth this out a little. And then, if you want to speed up the drying process a little, we can use our hair dryer. So we're back after we've kind of dried our piece. And again, if you'd rather just let it. So now we have dried our front side and we can go on to the back. And again, if you want to just step away a little bit and do something while it's drying, instead of using a hair dryer, that's totally up to you. But I'm going to put a coat on the back side as well. And I know this is a plaque and it leans and you're probably not going to see the other side, but still, it just is a nicer finishing touch. So I would just, Today's been kind of a funny videoing day. Mary Ann and I have been laughing. We had to rig up a few things, so bear with us. I think you still get the drift. And you know, we always put directions inside your kit um, pretty much step by step. And I know some people feel confident just looking at that. And I think the videos are nice because you can see the actual how-to and the process. But you know, if you're questioning anything, you can go back and read those little um, tips on your sheet inside your kit as well, and I think that will help you out. Help you out. And again, you know, you are seeing some of the wood coming through, but that's actually kind of a nice, rustic, natural feeling, especially with a birdhouse. It's kind of an outdoorsy thing. The sponge allows you to get in any little crevices, which is nice. And if like when this dries, you have any edge that maybe has a little too much paint or anything like that on it. When we go to distress our piece of wood, you can um, touch those up as well um, with the sandpaper. So we've got the board painted now on both sides. So again, you would want to wait until your paint dries. So I think while that's happening, rather than use my hair dryer again, I am just going to take that little piece of wood that I showed you earlier as an embellishment, and I'm gonna paint that. And I'm gonna do that in my Ocean Breeze color. And you know, if you're really brave and you wanna try something different, you could mix the blue and the white and get a little lighter color too. Um, you know, that's totally up to you. But I just think this is such a pretty color. I love this color. edges. You don't really need to do the back side of this one because you're going to be gluing it. So I would just do your edges. If you get a little on the back, it doesn't really matter. Again, you're probably going to have to do a little touch up. So you've done all four edges and the front, and I wouldn't worry too much about the back. But make sure you get it all now, because once you get this glued down, you don't want to have to be touching up because then you got kind of a little fine line. So I'm gonna lay that just kind of to dry. And always good to have that little bit of paper toweling that you can wipe things. So we're kind of waiting for our things here to dry. It looks like my wood glue is setting up pretty good there too. So again, you just keep checking that. 
and then you want to pick the side that you think looks the best for the front and there definitely seems to be one side that's a little better and I think it's just the way the holes were were drilled so when you decide on that then you're ready to go ahead and begin I think some of my paints still a tiny bit wet I think on this one I'm just going to leave um, just for the sake of time my roof a light color again yours is a natural wood it's like a mahogany or cherry or something so the wood really is pretty but at this point if you decide that you would like to paint it when your wood glue is dry um, on your roof you could go ahead and do that I think I would avoid painting the back or the little slot that's going to connect to um, your slab of wood I would just paint the front the sides that you're going to see and that little inner edge and if you get a little bit in here it's not going to matter but don't get anything real glumpy because i'm afraid if you got a lot of drips when you go to try to fit it it's not going to fit exactly right and like i said in the beginning of the video you do have to kind of play with the mitered corners to see which direction of the wood fits the best onto um, your house okay so one end fits better than the other so just kind of fiddle with that and they should the guys were really particular about that and they matched each um, two pieces of wood to the house that they cut so I think everything should match but sometimes you do have to fiddle to find you know which edge you're using at the top point okay so I think things are pretty much drying up here at this point as things are dry if you would like to distress your wood at all before you start adding any embellishments you can do that now if you don't like that look you don't have to do it but I don't know I kind of like the look of things looking a little roughed up and natural and actually like right now this is still a teeny bit wet on this side so um, it actually comes up a little bit better this is going to be my front side because it's a little smoother around the hole. But I like taking a little bit of that paint off, especially if you're going to leave the roof line natural. It kind of blends in with it. You don't really need to probably do much at the top because you're not going to see that part. Again, take off as much as you want. Maybe you want to do a little bit more around the hole for the birdie. Okay. So when you get that the way you want it, then again, take your dampened paper towel and just take off that extra little bit of sawdust so you're not painting into it. You can wipe your surface off a little bit. Good thing I have this brown paper down because I'm kind of being messy today. Okay, so I've got my birdhouse plaque. I have the roof line. Um, I would actually put the roof on at the very end because I found when I did my little piece, I had put the roof on first. But then if you do go up here and try to paint something in, you got to be careful not to get it underneath um, and it's just a little harder you end up wiping off a little bit so I mean you can keep your piece there just so that you can kind of see what it looks like design wise but I would hold off until the end to um, actually adhere that birdhouse then you can kind of use the wood glue all at one time and adhere all the extra pieces so at this point you can decide you're gonna start embellishing and again i wouldn't glue too much down till you kind of decide where you want things you have this little piece of wood you also have a little perch which i mean maybe you don't want to even have the hole and you want to just cover this um, i put my perch towards the bottom but if you want your perch up here you could have it here and you don't have to use all these things if you don't want either there's also a cute little drawer pull and i had laid mine flat on it but marianne had said put it up and it could be a little standing perch for the bird so there's lots of different ways to do it if you use one side of it it's more of a just um, smooth finish but if you like a little bit glitzier look there's a kind of 
design in the other side. So again, you could use that, but you don't have to use everything either. If you want to just do more of a painterly effect, you could do that as well. Now, being that this is blue, you might want to paint your roof blue, and you could do that as well too. So this is where you have to start kind of making some decisions about how you're going to design your little plaque. So I think I might put, not go all the way down this time like I did before, so I see some of this little bit of roughness that I left, and maybe do something like this. Now, at this point, you can start using some of the extra little things we gave you, and you might have some other things at home as well. But if you take just a little bit of your paint and your little brush that's in your kit, you can get some nice effects with like a printerly effect, kind of just using the tip of your brush. I think I might need a little more paint. So at this point, you can start deciding on some little designs. If you want to practice a bit first on your butcher paper, you could do that. Um, I, I think I'm just going to keep this really simple and go about and do this. But maybe you want to leave a bigger space in between them and then use the tip of a Q-tip to go in between to make a pattern. So you're kind of thinking patterns at this point. Um, so patterns and designs. This is kind of the fun part. Okay. So you could do this all the way around. You could continue underneath each one or every other one and make like a checkerboard pattern. There's all kinds of things you can do. I'm not going to show you every little step, but again, if you wanted to take your Q-tips, you have quite a few of those in there, and maybe you want to do some little design underneath with printing. Maybe you have um, something at home. Another fun thing to use is even the end of an eraser tip can see that gives you some nice circles. So if you wanted to make a bigger circle, you could do this. I'm just trying to show you some ideas here for this. Oh. So this is where the fun kind of starts going in. Um, maybe around, this is again where I'm going to kind of clean off this, maybe around the circle you want to do a little design. Could use, I didn't put in a pencil in your kit because I figured everybody pretty much has a pencil. But um, you can use anything you want for um, printing. You could use your Q-tip for this. Um, you have to find things that are kind of small because um, you know we don't have a huge space here to work. It's kind of like printmaking, really, which is kind of fun. So you could do that. And I'm just kind of clean this off. And then like on my sample, I thought this kind of looked dumb like Danish or something, but I did something up here. But maybe you don't want to get that involved and you just want to keep it kind of simple. Um, you could do something on the roof part of, you know, that upper edge. So when you're standing it up and looking at it, you see some lines or pattern there. Or maybe you, you don't want to do a whole lot. I mean, that's totally up to you. Um, you could do something all along the edges or, you could, you know, you could even paint the outer edges up here in the blue to tie in some of this ocean breeze color too. So this is where you have to start kind of making some decisions. This is where you start just using your own creativity and making this little birdhouse plaque be just your very own. Okay, so when all your designing is done, and we could go on and on to do a little bit more, but this is just to kind of show you some um, things to think about. Then, when everything's said and done and your paints are dry, you're going to be doing your gluing. And again, you have your wood glue and your little Q-tip. And um, what you're going to do at this point, like I would decide wherever you're putting this and put your little piece of wood in. See, this glue dries pretty fast. That's why um, you can see even in the, in the bowl, once you open it up, it, kind of does, so you may want to put your little lid back on. Um, but just put a few little blotches on, and then wherever this is going to go, be 
make sure it's straight and then give it a little pressing. And if you make a mistake, you know, you can take your fine little brush. The brush that you have has a really flat um, edge and you can take it with, dry it off between colors though. Um, and say I got some white in there that I didn't want, you can get into your blue paint and touch over it a little bit too. But you do wanna be sure that you dry off your, your brushes um, between using the white and the blue. Okay, so that seems to be pretty well in place. And if you want your little perch at the bottom, and this here, now if you put this up like this, you are going to have to find something to wedge here so that it will hold it up. So, you know, think about that before you start gluing, like um, maybe just, um, you could even probably use the edge of your paint can or your, your one of your paints or something, um, but just something's going to have to hold it up. So you can glue that on. Same, same way, you can take your wood glue for your perch. Just put a little bit on here. If you want it right in the center, you may even want to measure to be sure you're getting it centered, or you can just eyeball it probably right down kind of the center from the hole that's drilled in your piece. And then just let that set up. You can do this. And then the very last step after you've glued that piece on, and it'll be the same thing, just a little bit of glue here and here. I did include a couple of little wooden beads if you wanna put them on the end where those holes are. You'll see in my sample, I did that. Maybe you have some little jewel or a piece of cork or whatever you might have just something little that you might want to add in there but you don't have to do that that was just a little something extra and then in the very end after everything that you're putting on it is glued you're going to take your popsicle stick and add in and don't worry i mean it does dry clear and you can use your dampened paper towel too to um, wipe off any excess before you stick it on This wood glue, I like it because it dries faster than some of the other glues we use. Like when we use the E6000 and stuff, I just think this dries, oops, dries up a lot faster. But it does dry clear. So, okay. So then you're gonna take this and just put it on here. Give it some good pushing. A lot of stuff on my hands here. Now another thing you might even want to consider doing with this, you could just whitewash and let some of the wood show through as well. Now my um, roof is a more natural color than what you're going to have in yours. We ran out of that one so I used this as the sample to do the video but you can see if you're using some nice clean water, if you've got any glue or anything on there, pretty much this is the time to get it all wiped off. And you'll already feel, I mean, it's kind of sticking down there already. So, this is our second little piece. It's kind of the opposite of the first one we did. Again, think outside the box. Think about things maybe you have at home that you'd like to add. Maybe you have something that's kind of like a special memento that you just want to make um, be a part of this. Um, if you're really artistic, you could paint like a, a little bird or something somewhere. You could, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do. But um, you can see that just with using the ocean paint, the white, and the natural look of our wood, you can really come up with a lot of kind of interesting effects. So, at this point, your project's pretty well complete. You know, we always like to see what you did with your project. So you know, if you want to email a picture of it to me, I'd love to see that. And um, my email address is in your directions. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or to um, email and we can help you out with that. And in the meantime, just enjoy doing this. Then make this a really nice part of your spring decor. You could hang this outside if you want. It is, the wood glue should, should hold pretty well, but it could be a nice piece for indoors as well. So enjoy being creative at home with our kit.
to go from OPC.